Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Stephanie. And welcome to our literature unit for the month of November. We saved the best for last year as we come to the end of November, and we're talking about a work of literature. It's actually a novel.、Uh, it's called "To Kill a Mockingbird." This is a novel, and the title is "To Kill a Mockingbird," and it's a coming-of-age novel, and it's set in the Southern United States. It's in small town in the small town south, and this is a small town somewhere. I guess it's in Alabama. It is. It's in a small town called Maycomb, Alabama, and that's definitely in the deep south, where they have quite a southern accent. Although we're not going to be talking in a southern accent, we will be talking though today about the plot of this book, this novel. Right now, though, we're going to read through today's lesson. Our story begins in small town Maycomb, Alabama, during the Great Depression. Tomboyish six-year-old Jean Louise Finch, nicknamed Scout, lives with her older brother Jem and their father Atticus. With the help of Calpurnia, their cook, Atticus is able to raise his children while working as a lawyer. Scout idolizes her father, who strives to give his children a moral upbringing. However, Scout and Jem still get into mischief. They make friends with an imaginative boy named Dill, and the three of them become fascinated with the nearby Radley House, where the odd, reclusive Boo Radley is rumored to have been locked up by his family. Scout begins school that fall, but struggles with her teacher's rigid, unsympathetic attitude. And the requirement that she needs to wear a dress. Atticus encourages Scout to see things from her teacher's perspective. Throughout the school year, Scout and Jem discover small treasures left for them in the hole of a tree near the Radley house. The children suppose these are from Boo Radley, but Boo's brother later covers the hole, leaving Jem heartbroken. Later that year. Atticus is assigned to defend a black man named Tom Robinson. Tom stands accused of raping Mayella Ewell, the daughter of a cruel white farmer named Bob Ewell. Racial tensions rise in Maycomb, and the Finches become targets of abuse by other white residents. Scout and Jem both get into trouble by reacting angrily to insults against their father. But Atticus uses this situation to teach them patience and understanding. For Christmas, the children receive air rifles, though Atticus warns them it's a sin to shoot a mockingbird because they don't do one thing but sing their hearts out for us. You know, I'd forgotten why the novel was called "To Kill a Mockingbird," and now, now、uh, the last sentence in day one reminds me why. There's a great、uh, sentence or great phrase that Atticus says to his kids when they have their new air rifles, and he tells them why they should never shoot a mockingbird. A mockingbird is a real bird.、Uh, it's a bird found in North America. It's gray, it has a long tail, and mockingbirds. Have a unique talent; they can actually copy the songs of other birds, which is really interesting. So, if someone's,、um, if you call someone a mockingbird, or someone's、uh, copying you, you could say, "Oh, you're just a mockingbird." It is a real bird, and they have、um, really a, a very unique talent if they can copy other birds, their birds' calls or the birds' songs that you hear. Mm-hmm.、Uh, you can also call that mimicking、mm-hmm. or copying the bird songs of other birds. I should mention that the word mock by itself is a verb, and that usually means to make fun of someone by copying what they're saying. And if you talk about a coming of age story, it's usually a story about someone who's young and they're becoming an adult. They learn some lesson, they have some experience, and they go through a change. They're no longer an innocent child; they are now a mature adult. The name of the town is Maycomb, and it's happening during the Great Depression. So there isn't a lot of money,、uh, especially down south. They really、uh, didn't have much money to begin with. Now we've got different characters in the book. 
One that plays an important role is a little girl. She's six years old. Her name is Jean Louise Finch. Finch, of course, is the name of a bird as well. And she doesn't like to use her real name,、uh, like a lot of kids. She has a nickname that she prefers, and they call her Scout. So, if you describe a girl as being tomboyish, it means they don't typically dress up in dresses and fix their hair like a pretty little girl. They would rather hang out with the boys and climb trees, play baseball, things like that. Tomboyish. But anyway, her nickname is Scout. She lives with her older brother, whose name is Jem, which is unusual too. I think it's more southern. And their father, whose name is Atticus, and that's also a very unusual name, Atticus. Atticus, yes.、Uh, I was going to say Jem here is spelled with a J. If you talk about diamonds and rubies and emer emeralds and sapphires and stuff like that, those are gems. Or gemstones, but that's spelled with a G. But this is someone's name spelled with a gem,、uh, mm. J. Excuse me, <laughs> spelled with a J. The name is Gem. And then again, we've got the father, whose name is Atticus. Now, with the help of Calpurnia, their cook, Atticus is able to raise his children while working as a lawyer. So he's got a cook in the house that he pays, and the cook there, I guess, helps raise the kids.、Uh, the cook,、uh, you know, prepares. Prepares food for them, but also maybe looks after the kids and makes sure they do their homework and they take a bath and go to bed on time and stuff like that. So that gives Atticus plenty of time to pursue his career because he is a lawyer. He's working as an attorney there, and Scout idolizes her father, who strives to give his children a moral upbringing. So if you idolize someone, that means you really look up to them. They are your role model. Yeah, and it sounds like their mother must have passed away when the kids were young, so maybe Scout doesn't even know her mom. Maybe her mother died when she was born. We're not told that, but、uh, that's why Atticus is、uh, raising his kids alone with the help of Calpurnia, which again is a very unusual name, and she functions as their cook and also just kind of takes care of the kids、uh, while their dad goes to work every day. So he is able to raise his kids while working as a lawyer. You heard Tom call、um, Atticus an attorney. An, an attorney is just a different title for the same job. I actually called my dad attorney when I was growing up instead of lawyer, but they're both correct. Scout loves her dad. This happens a lot. If、uh, You know, especially for young kids, they usually look at their parents if they're good parents, and they really do idolize their dad or their mom. They want to be just like them when they grow up. Her father, it says here, strives to give his children a moral upbringing. Strive isn't a word that you often hear in Taiwan, but we actually use it quite a bit in America. It's a great word if you're talking about someone who's working very hard to achieve something. So, if someone's lazy, you probably aren't ever going to use the word "strive" with them. But if somebody has a lot of goals and works very hard at accomplishing those goals, you could say they've、uh, they've they're striving very hard to be successful. So, he strives to give his children a moral upbringing. Moral here, of course, refers to teaching his kids what is right and what is wrong, not just what is legal and what is illegal.、Um, a moral、uh, upbringing would be a dad who teaches his kids to never lie, to always tell the truth, or to help help their friends instead of hurting their friends. That would be a dad who tries to help his kids have a moral upbringing. Upbringing just refers to how you raise a child. Yeah, but、uh, kids will be kids. However, it says Scout and Jim still get into mischief,、of、which、course. is understandable. Of course, <laughs> you're always trying to、uh, have fun when you're a kid. Mischief just means you do naughty things. Maybe not really naughty things. Maybe you're not trying to kill somebody or steal <laughs> things, but maybe you're trying to play tricks on other people、yeah. or or play when you're not supposed to be playing and stuff like that. That's what mischief is. And the adjective is mischievous. So you could describe your children as being very mischievous. 
if they don't really behave that much and they're kind of crazy and they're having fun all the time and maybe not doing their homework and maybe not、uh, doing their chores and stuff like that. And that's what mischief is all about. Okay, that brings us to the midway point in our lesson for today. It's time now to take a break and listen to our Chinese teacher. Hi everyone, my name is Jenny. Today we're looking at the literature unit. We're going to talk about a book. This book is called "To Kill a Mockingbird." To Kill a Mockingbird. Okay, let's look at the book. The book is about the story of the book. 到底是什么？好，在第一段里面告诉大家时间跟背景。时间呢？哇，那就要回到很久以前。这其实是一九六零年代的一个故事。但当时呢，这个地方，哎，这一家人，我们的女主角其实是一个小女孩。然后这个小女孩呢，跟她的哥哥还有父亲住在一起，而他们家里有一位。帮忙他们处理家务的，嗯，厨师，这位叫做 Calpurnia。那当然，这故事就从这边开始，在这个背景之下，其实这个家庭里面，当然母亲已经不在，已经过世了，所以爸爸呢就要。当担任这个父亲父代母职，然后把孩子养大。不过这里要注意一个小地方是文法，文法呢在这边提到父亲的时候，他说我们的这个小女孩 Scout， 她很崇拜她的父亲。All right, Scout idolizes her father。后面的逗点，再接着 Who strives to give his children a moral upbringing？ 好，这个、地方的逗点再加 Who。大家应该知道，这种有逗点再加个关系代名词，引导关系词句的话，我们说它是非限定用法。当然，道理很简单，因为这个非限定用法后面的关系词句纯粹就是补充说明，哎，他这个父亲抚养他们长大这个状况，可有可无，是附加说明补充之用的。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back again. We're talking about our work of literature for the month of November, two thousand twenty. And the book is a novel entitled "To Kill a Mockingbird," and it's all about coming of age in the small town South during the Great Depression. Now, the main characters in this novel are Jean Louise Finch. She's a tomboy, and she's got a brother named Jem. And then their father is Atticus, and he's a lawyer. And then, because he's a lawyer, he needs help in the house, so they have a cook whose name is Calpurnia, and she helps raise the children. And he goes off to work, and of course, Scout idolizes her father, and he wants to give them a moral upbringing. But those kids are always getting into mischief. Yeah, as kids always do. You gotta watch them because they're always, you know, getting into trouble. It's not big trouble, but、uh, enough trouble. So you have to watch them. Well, they make friends with an imaginative boy named Dill. So Dill is very creative. He has a good imagination, and he's probably fun to play with as well. So the three of them. Become fascinated with the nearby Radley house. So the Radleys it sounds like they're neighbors of the kids, and the three of them are really fascinated with、uh, one of the Radley、um, residents, whose name is Boo Radley. And if you see the movie in particular, you can see there's there's something wrong with Boo. He is、uh, he looks like a full grown man. He's kind of a big guy, but、uh, he he is.、Um, Mentally disabled, so he he actually thinks in a way that's more like a you know a six or seven year old, even though he looks like he's an adult. So he's odd and reclusive. It says if you're reclusive, it means you don't like to hang out in big groups. You like to keep to yourself.、Uh, you don't go out very much.、Uh, some people like that kind of lifestyle.、Um, he's odd, so he's different. He's definitely different, but.、Uh, 
The kids actually、uh, like Boo quite a bit, and it's rumored. In that little tiny Maycomb town, that Boo is locked up by his family. His family doesn't want him to go outside. They don't like other people to see that they have someone who's mentally disabled in their family. And so,、uh, poor, poor Boo. He ha- finally has some friends he can play with, but his own family doesn't want him to even leave the house. Yeah, maybe for his own good or whatever. But Safety,、uh, yeah, he's yeah, locked、maybe. up. I don't know if it. I don't know to what degree he was locked up. Whether they kept him in a jail cell inside the house, or they just told him he couldn't go very far from the well, house. Well, he doesn't have a good family. Let's just say that. Ah,、uh, yeah, that、uh, that much is certain here. So yeah, he's locked up by his family in some way. But here in the next paragraph, we shift our focus back to Scout. And she begins school that fall, but struggles with her teacher's rigid, unsympathetic attitude and the requirement that she needs to wear a dress. So here it's a mean, strict teacher here. But remember, Scout is kind of a free spirit here.、Uh, she's a tomboy.、Uh, she doesn't behave like a young girl at all, and it sounds like her father doesn't really care about that. Whatever you want to be, Scout, that's fine with me. But、uh, she goes to school, and as you know, school、uh, tries to make people behave a certain way because you've got、uh, everybody there, and everybody should be the same. Otherwise, it gets very chaotic. But here it says that Scout struggles with her teacher's rigid. Unsympathetic attitude. If you're rigid, that means you're kind of stubborn. You don't really change your approach or your opinions. You might、uh, bring up some other、uh, alternate ways of looking at things, but the person says, "No, no, no, no. I'm just not going to accept that. That's not the way it is. Sit down. Don't talk to me anymore. That's rigid." Uh, rigid also means kind of hard and not soft, like a rigid structure, for example. And if you're unsympathetic, that means you just really have no feelings for other people, especially if bad things are happening to them. You just don't care. Yeah, it sounds like her teacher's not a very a very kind person. We're gonna find out a little later that her teacher is quite severe, very rigid. Um, and she's a hypocrite, so all of those bad things. So she starts to go to school. She's probably not very happy there. She doesn't want to wear a dress and sit in a chair and listen all day. She wants to be outside and she wants to be free. <laughs> Scout likes to play. So that's what happens in the fall, though. She has to start school now. Atticus, her dad, encourages Scout to see things from his teacher's perspective. She's got a good dad. He probably understands that his that Scout's teacher is never going to change,、hmm. and so for Scout to find any sort of happiness, she's got to understand her teacher and why her teacher may think the way she thinks. Now, if you talk about someone's perspective, it's how they look at a situation, and based on your background and what you've learned and the things you've gone through, you might have a different perspective on something than somebody else who was raised in a different part of the world, had a different kind of family, your upbringing was different. Well, Atticus is a good dad, and he says. But Scout, she may be those things, but you need to try to understand things from her perspective. Try to see things like your teacher sees them. Well, throughout the school year,、uh, Scout had you know Scout and her brother Jim. They discover small treasures left for them in the hole of a tree near the Radley house. Now remember, the Radleys are their neighbors, and there's this tree outside the Radleys' house that has a big hole there. And inside that hole, they put their hands inside, and they discover little treasures. So it's almost like somebody knows they're going to come visit, and wants to leave them a little surprise. Uh, I'm not going to give away who it is yet, but、uh, I think that's really fun. Of course, they're fascinated by this tree and the the treasures they find. Yep, indeed. If you're a kid, of course, you would be very excited to find those things in the hole of a tree. But the children suppose these are from Boo Radley. 
but Boo's brother later covers the hole, leaving Jem heartbroken. So I guess the brother found out about this and thought, "Hey, Boo, you're not supposed to be doing that. That's a bad thing. You cannot be leaving little treasures for the neighbor kids in the tree out there." So the hole is covered, and Jem, well, he likes that, but he's heartbroken. Oh no, where am I going to get little treasures now? Sad. Well, later that year, Atticus is assigned to defend a black man named Tom Robinson. That's what a lawyer does. So,、uh, Tom is accused of raping a girl, and he needs a lawyer to defend him. If you defend somebody, you give reasons why、uh, something is untrue, right? So you're the one to speak or write for them and defend them. Give them reasons why something they've been accused of is untrue. So he's going to defend Tom. Tom is accused of. If you're accused of something, someone points their finger at you and says you did this.、Uh, it could be true. It could be false. We don't know. And he's accused of raping Mayella.、Uh, Mayella, you well. She's the daughter of a really mean man. He's a white farmer named Bob. So he's in big trouble. Now they've got racial tensions. In their little city or town of Maycomb, this is down south, a long time ago, around、uh, the the Great Depression, the 30s. If you have racial tensions, it means people of different races are fighting and not getting along.、Uh, they don't trust each other, and they think each of the the groups are you know bad people. So there are racial tensions, and then the Finches, that scout's last name, the Finches become targets of abuse. By other white residents. Yeah, back then, if you defended a black man,、uh, the other white people in your community would think you were you were a bad person, and they would go after you. So, if you are、uh, being abused, someone is hurting you, usually physically or mentally. And abuse is the noun form. If you look at it though as a verb, it's spelled the same, but we say abuse with a z sound. Abuse is the noun form with an s sound. Yeah, so they're probably yelled at, called names, maybe even、uh, beaten and stuff like that. And Scout and Jem both get into trouble by reacting angrily to insults against their father. So yeah, someone calls、uh, their father a name, they、mm-hmm. shout back. They probably get in some kind of fight. But Atticus, the father, uses this situation to teach them patience. And understanding—that's a good lesson to learn there. Be patient and try to understand their position, even though their position is probably wrong. And for Christmas, the children receive air rifles, though Atticus warns them it's a sin to shoot a mockingbird because they don't do one thing but sing their hearts out for us. They only do one thing: they sing for us. So yet, you should never shoot a mockingbird. With an air rifle. Now I know what a BB gun is, but、uh, what is an air rifle? I don't know. Yeah,、uh, the rifle would just have、uh, really con-、uh, a strong air pressure come out of the the gun, and it can actually hurt if you get too close to someone. So he's warning them: don't you dare kill those mockingbirds, who are harmless, and all they do is try to sing for us. And I think it's a wonderful line. They don't do one thing but sing their hearts out for us. It's not great grammar, but it's the way they talk down in the South, especially at that point in history. Okay, so that is day one. We're not done with the plot, though, guys. In day two, we're going to continue talking about、um, the trial. Remember, Atticus is defending Tom Robinson. We're going to talk about the trial. The what happens then, and also an attack on the kids. It's pretty awful. But right now we've got to wrap up. We're going to listen to our Chinese teacher one more time. 好，我们继续来谈。当然，这个梅冈城故事里头，其实主角应该说这个小孩子的角色很重要。那这边就提到，除了 Scout 之外，他有个哥哥。那么他们还有一位，嗯，非常有想象力的一个男孩叫 Dale。好，那这一边就提到了，嗯，他们常常在一起玩。嗯、呃，在这个地方附近呢，有一家人。这一家人，哎，他们住的地方，他就说他是 Radley House。好。这一家人住的这个 Radley House 后面有个逗点，然后接着讲 
where the odd reclusive Boo Radley is rumored to have been locked up by his family. 好，一样的，我们刚刚提到非限定用法，所以这个地方的逗点。后面再加 where， 当然 where 是关系副词，不过他讲的其实就是指在这个 Radley House 附近。好，副词没错，但是这个逗点告诉你非限定用法。我们补充说明一下，哎，这个附近是怎么样的状况？好，接下来我们继续来看下面这一段。我们提到这个。这个书呢，它的女主角其实是算是这个小女孩，也就是 Scout。Scout 她在学校里面，其实呢，哎，还蛮辛苦的。倒不是因为她不聪明，而是她跟老师之间的关系，还有呢，她的穿着打扮。这当然也跟这个书的主题有关，因为 Scout。他其实是一个比较像所谓的 tomboy， 就像我们其实，在第一段里面有说到他这个 tomboy， 就是有那么一点，哎，女孩子可是很男孩子气哦。那所以说，嗯，他不想穿裙子，可是学校呢说女孩子就要穿裙子。好，那我们注意一下文法，文法这里提到说他在学校里面的挣扎于。他老师的呃、uh, 那种 rigid, unsympathetic attitude, and 好，我们知道有时候这个受词非常的长，所以我们要稍微把句子看清楚。他前面提到老师那种顽固无情的态度，还有后面这个提到 requirements， 也就是穿裙子的规定。好，受词很长，稍微要看到。它到底是什么跟什么？那 a n d 这个字先抓到，你的句构就会很清楚。再来，下面呢，我们就刚刚前面谈到这里面的人物里面有一个重要的角色是 Boo Radley。Boo Radley， 嗯，他在这个故事里面。他的确占了一个很重要的角色。我们如果再往下读，就了解，嗯，他到底是一个好人呢，还是一个坏人？他是一个疯子呢，还是其实他在处处帮助这些小孩？好，那么接下来下面就继续说这个故事。哎，其实还牵涉到一个黑人，他叫 Tom Robinson， 他被控哎性侵了一个白人的女孩。那当然，他到底。被定罪的原因，他真的是一个罪人、犯人吗？好，所以我们之后就会叙述到这个故事跟种族的问题还是有关系的。我们今天讲解就先到这边，我们下次见，谢谢您的聆听。That's it for today, but please join us again next time because we're going to continue to summarize our featured novel for the month of November. To kill a mockingbird. It's all about coming of age in the small town south. Please join us then. From all of us here at English Digest, I'm Tom. I'm Stephanie.、Bye. See ya.